笑了。Welcome back to The Doctor's Companion presents Doctor Who, The Long Way Round, the weekly podcast where we review and discuss every episode of Doctor Who, one doctor at a time. I'm Nick Jimenez. I'm Scott Corelli. And I'm Cassandra Fredrickson. And today on the show, we will be discussing The Happiness Patrol, the seventh doctor's sixth story. Yeah. Uh, So The Happiness Patrol comes from writer Graham Curry and uh, was directed by Chris either Klo or Cloth. Um, I'm not entirely sure which one it is. You know what? I mm, No, no. I, I, I don't know if I can help you with that one either. <laughs> Klo. Klo. Cloth. Yeah. Klo? Klo? Maybe Klo? Yeah. Well, don't throw that into the mix. I'm going to have to say this later. <laughs> When I do the recaps, oh yeah, you gotta you gotta decide one of them. <laughs> well, um, there's three I don't know. parts. Just use just use each one. Uh, <laughs> not to get too inside baseball, but uh, uh, sometimes if there is a name like that, I don't know if the listeners notice, but if there's like four parts, I'll just try it a couple different ways. Yeah, see, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I notice. <laughs> um so yeah so the happiness patrol um all right so graham curry uh was trying to break into screenwriting and he wrote a a football drama that's uh soccer for you uh americans um including mm-hmm. the three of us uh, <laughs> uh a uh a football drama called over the moon uh, and it won a London area competition, and one of the judges was Tony Dinner of the BBC Script Unit, and uh, Tony Dinner encouraged Graham Curry to send his uh, prize-winning screenplay to the various script editors around the BBC, including Doctor Who's Andrew Cartmel who was uh, trying to build up like a new stable of writers um, that could, uh, you know, uh, fresh, fresh voices. Um, And uh, Cartmel liked the script. And so he invited Curry to come in and pitch ideas. uh, But uh, Curry was not doing so hot uh, with the ideas. He didn't really know what a Doctor Who story was supposed to be like. Um, but eventually he hit on an idea about a planet where unhappy people were being persecuted. And uh, it was meant to be a uh, commentary on modern day superficiality as well as the policies of Margaret Thatcher's conservative government, um, which is why their leader is a woman in this story. Mm-hmm. Um She's uh, Margaret Thatcher, apparently. Uh, so yeah, um, and and uh, and for what <laughs> Cartmel just really enjoyed the idea of the Doctor arriving on a planet and striving to make the populace unhappy. Um, he just <laughs> thought that was amusing. So uh, so they went with this, and uh, it would be a three part story that would be the studio par- bound three parter. Uh, to be paired with the location-bound Silver Nemesis, which would be shot immediately after this. Um, and so he had to rewrite, uh, Curry had to rewrite the story to uh, fit within uh, studio, basically all interiors. It needed to be like all interiors or it could be shot for interiors. Um, and so he did, and he wrote uh, a version of the story that... Um, 
took place over uh, over like uh, weeks. Like the whole thing took place over weeks originally. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, they asked him to change it to take place all in one night um, because they thought that that was paced better uh, to do it that way. Um, I think I agree. And uh, I don't, uh, but we'll get there. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so I uh, changed it to be an all in one night thing and uh, wrote this story. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's that's it. The only other bit of drama happened uh, when the episode came out. The um, company Bassett Foods, who have a candy mascot called Birdie Bassett, uh, sued the uh, BBC Copyright Department um, over the um, Candyman uh, because they felt <laughs> that he infringed on their on their uh, character, their uh, mascot, Birdie. B- so Birdie Bassett. I, uh, I I I just Google Birdie Bassett, and uh, you know, I I guess I could see why. Yeah. Uh, Ber- Bertie Bassett does appear to be, uh, listeners, uh, perp- and, again, and everyone, pur- purple, purple circular head. Wait, wait, wait. Like, is there anyone listening to this who isn't a listener? I guess that's at the Witcher. I was referring like to you and Cass. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I mean, I'm listening to you. <laughs> you are at the moment listeners. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, Candyman. I, I guess, like, yeah, if, if they were trying to make a live action like Birdie Bassett that could like go to malls and hug kids, it would probably look like Candyman. Yeah, but Candyman is also very clearly a robot, and Birdie Bassett appears to be like a monster mm-hmm. or like you know an organic <laughs> creature. A monster? He's cute. He's a cute little. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, like, I mean, Elmo's a monster. Yeah, I you guess know, that's technically, true. he's like a I he's mean, a cute little candy goblin. Uh. Birdie Bassett. Yeah. Um, the second row of Google images for Birdie Bassett is actually a side-by-side image of Birdie Bassett and Candyman, conveniently, very conveniently. Uh, and I uh, – yeah. Oh, yellow lower section. They both have a yellow lower section. Yeah. Yeah, I, know, I mean, but it just feels very much to me like it's a uh, – Coincidence. Yeah, it's a coincidence. I mean, I think certain, I certain colors just look good together and – they Definitely. wanted a man made of candy because originally the as it was written in the script, uh, the candy man was just like a man that was made out of candy. That's um, weird. Like he was he, like the makeup was going to be like just sort of augmenting like a normal person, but making them oh, look like horrifying, making them look like they were made out of candy. Um that's was the original intent of the character, and then they decided to do something a little wackier, and then we got mm-hmm. what we got. Um, he actually looks a little like um, if you mash together uh, Ber- Birdie uh, – Birdie, what is his name? Birdie Bassett? Barrett. Yeah. Bassett. Ber- Birdie Bassett and Wario. Like if you sort of just merge them into one being, that's what Candyman looks like. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's that's it. I mean, it's not really um, not really a lot of interesting uh, stuff here in this story. It's really just well, he had the idea and then he wrote it and then we made it and that was it. <laughs> so. There you go. But I will say Mm -hmm. that um, the writer never worked on the show again. One, for one reason, because there wasn't a lot of opportunities to uh, after this. And uh, two, because uh, he didn't really like writing for the show. He was just like, well, that wasn't as fun as I wanted it to be. Uh, And then he ended up working on um, shows like EastEnders and The Bill and a radio drama called Citizens. Um, so I don't think he was cut out for writing Doctor Who. I don't think it was really his, uh, his forte. Um, but, uh, anyway, that's... I think, no, never mind. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I can kind of see this not being, like, mm-hmm. the, the start of a, of a long career of writing for Doctor Who. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, it was it wasn't a start for That's anyone's true. career for, for writing Doctor That's Who, true. <laughs> That's except maybe true. Paul yeah. Cornell uh, because he got to he wrote all of the the books that take place after this. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm curious what everyone's feelings on this story are. Uh, Cass, what 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 do you think of this story? Um, I think I liked it better the first time I watched it. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a rewatch for me, as most of these are. Uh, I remember the candy robot being like more of a thing in the story, like, more of a threat instead of just, like, shouting the whole time. Um, Gilbert. Shouting Gilbert. Yeah. Most of the time. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Like, the the satire, whatever they were going for, is pretty heavy-handed. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. 80s Doctor Who loves its weird dystopian stuff. So, mm-hmm. there's that. If weird dystopian stuff with candy robots is your jam, then this is your jam. But I don't no know. No pun intended. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, the pun is absolutely intended. Candy don't jam. You, don't you know me? <laughs> like <laughs> happy, but, happy. I I want a I want a jar of Cassandra's happy candy jam. I don't. You don't want that? No. <laughs> Why? I don't your, know. With your face. Happy on it? candy jam. It's like, ah. like the uh, Steven Universe makes jam, right? That's true. That happens. <laughs> jam buds. <laughs> jam buds. Yeah. yeah. What about See, you? I know Steven what, Universe. What about you, Nick? What do you What do you think of this story? Oh, I had a ball. I had I had a great time. This was uh, ridiculous. I mean, the, the I I I I definitely think this has my favorite group of of baddies this round. <laughs> um, I loved. I mean, I loved. I love the candy man so much. Uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to just list the order, you know, cause we'll, we'll get to the moments. Um, I really like, this kind of reminded me a lot of paradise towers. I don't remember if that mm. made it. Was that the late seventies? Was that, was that in the eighties at that point? Par- paradise yeah. Yeah. Towers? That was cause that was seventh doctor. It was uh seventh. That and- was seventh doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Great. It was, it was seventh and, um, uh, what's your name? The redhead. Mel. 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 Yeah. Mel. Oh, that's right. For some reason, yeah. I was I was I was imagining Pete Davidson in Paradise Towers, but you're right, it was, and that makes sense because yeah, and I love this for a lot of the Pete? same reasons that I love Paradise. Why are you picturing Pete Davidson? I don't know. I don't know. I'm watching these all in a in a blur. Oh, oh, you but, mean Peter Davidson? Okay. You, oh, not Pete Davidson. <laughs> like from yeah. SNL. I was like, why yeah, are you I was picturing him in that? Was the, hey, it's me. I'm a doctor. That was my first time ever trying to do a Pete Davidson voice. <laughs> it's pretty um, good. Not too bad. Thank you. Ariana um, Grande. Um. I'm dating Ariana Grande. Can you believe it? <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I very much like Paradise Towers, the way I just felt kind of, I really loved this world. I really just found myself liking the world of the Happiness Patrol. I just thought it was just weird. And I liked that it was about the doctor kind of, you know, causing social disorder. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved his, I loved the, the sidekick, the harmonica guy that I'm sure we'll talk about. And mm-hmm. Yeah, there was just a lot of fun stuff in this episode. So um, this one doesn't really work for me. Uh, like Cass, I remember I remember liking it when I watched it the first time. Uh, but watching it now, I just feel like it basically fails on every possible level as a story. Um, mm. Like just just directorially, it's like why are you using so many like weird noir Dutch angles? Also, why is this a noir? Like, why is everything so dark if being dark and glum is against the law? Like, shouldn't everything be bright? Like, the lighting doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, yeah, no. It, 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 aesthetically, it's a very kind of, Yeah, because, like, they, the, one of the first lines that Ace has is like, look, it's so garish and bright and tacky. And it's like, it looks like, like 89 Gotham City. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and like the original intent for this was that like in the script, it was supposed to be like bright and shiny and all these things. And, uh, there was going to be Muzak playing constantly, like Mm -hmm. throughout the entire story. Um, that was just going to be a constant background noise was like this cheery Muzak. 
and uh, they decided that like, that would be annoying, so they cut it out. And it's like, well, yeah, that's it would be point. annoying, but that's the point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, of course it's going to be annoying. That's the point. That's the whole. It's it's a half know. measure. Yeah, yeah, it is, and it and it feels like a lot of half measures. And I don't, I honestly, um, you know, as we'll as we'll talk about as we got through it, I really like lost the plot thread. Like this feels like at most a two parter. <laughs> like it's it's weird that a three parter feels thin. I you know what I watched this again with the roommate, uh, and which is maybe I'm I'm sure. It, uh, made it more fun but uh at one point i said out loud during part two it's like half of these people are just dicking around uh-huh like yeah or just are, are just hanging out like playing harmonica <laughs> or like <laughs> two snipers just having an extended convert well we'll get this we'll get to we'll get to it in part three but yeah, yeah just a lot of weird layabouts in Ye- this episode yeah it's just it's not paced very well and and that's the reason why i hate the all in one night thing like i really do Mm. think like it just it stretches credibility for me if you're saying that this world has existed as as we're presented in like the first you know 10 minutes of the first episode like this world Mm. has this colony has existed with these rules for x amount of time and this is just how this world works and you're telling me in like four hours the doctor comes in and just brings down the whole government that's insane to me wasn't Um, that his job like since the beginning the beginning of what like the show like the doctor Uh, just shows up causes a revolution and then pieces out yeah but it's never like four hours I don't yeah, know. I, I I just felt how short a amount of time this was because there were no points where – because there were so many scenes like Nick was saying of just like layabouts where they're just standing around playing harmonica or reading posters or having inane conversations. Mm-hmm. You don't have – there's no sense of time passing because it feels like you're watching 24. Like I just feel like I'm seeing every – single moment of time passing on screen and so it makes it unbelievable like you know as we'll talk about it they let fifi loose three times in those pipes over the course Mm -hmm. of like two three hours of time like it's just i don't know and then they stick Candyman to the ground like twice in a row oh yeah like he comes he will the doctor willingly goes back to candy man's base like three times yeah just to like talk to candy man again like i'm like it's like an rpg <laughs> yeah it is you're totally right and yeah it just doesn't nothing about the pacing works for me the world doesn't work with me like i don't buy i don't buy this world at all um and it's also like of the three times that they've done this same story doctor who <laughs> mm-hmm. um this is the worst one i think uh, like I vastly prefer the I, I vastly prefer the um, the uh, macro terror to this, and well, and I vastly mm-hmm. prefer the twelfth Doctor story with the smiley robot, the smiley face mm-hmm. robot, the emoji robots. Yeah, 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 the emoji robot. Like that's the, both of those are better than this story, and like pull off this same story better. And it's like if you're going to do this again, like at least make it worthwhile. And I don't think they did because I think Cass is right. It's very heavy handed in its political alignment, which is crazy because this is actually a step down from what it originally was. <laughs> My God. Yeah. They made them they made them scale it back because uh, it was just too much. And yeah, it just doesn't it just doesn't. I want to like this so much more than I actually do. I think. It's very frustrating to watch. I mm-hmm. think frustrating is uh, accidentally breaking a over a bottle of lemonade and making <laughs> you stick to the ground for like six hours. Yeah, that's what I felt like. That's what was happening. I felt like this somebody had poured lemonade on this on this story and not wasn't letting it move. <laughs> And I just I just kept going back to the room and finding it still stuck on the ground. Oh, good. You haven't moved. Here's some more sweets puns. 
All right, bye. Hello, Doctor. Free oh. me from my... Like, oh, <laughs> man, he was great. <laughs> yes, make a deal. Yeah, higher than you would think is how I would describe his voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it didn't if it didn't have a mustache, I would have assumed that it was the candy woman, to be honest. Was that supposed <laughs> to be a mustache? Yeah, that's supposed to be a mustache. That's why oh. I said that's why I said Wario. Oh, okay. Yes. Because it had a mustache and it had the spinny eyes. Yes. I thought you said Wario because of his gross dumpy body. Well that also. <laughs> but but Wario doesn't Wario have like the crazy hypnotized oh, yeah, eyes? Yeah, he, yeah. His his is like his is like a parody of Mario's mind. Everything about Wario is like a parody of Mario. Mm -hmm. It's like he's making fun of Mario by existing. Yeah. There's a lot of uh there's a lot of grown people who really like Wario to an unhealthy degree. <laughs> it's like it's uh, like Sonic. It's like Sonic. Right. Like, all right. I mean, I get it. You like these games, but where it's like you almost hope it's ironic. Yeah. Right. Or it's like one of those things where it started out ironic and then just became real mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. time. You're like, oh, no. What have you like done? Like you and Gotham. <laughs> no, that, that stayed that stayed 100% in uh, ironic territory. But I do, get, I, do, I do get genuine joy from ironically watching Gotham. So mm -hmm. take that for what the, you will, I guess. The joy is real. The joy is real. You're right. That is correct. <laughs> that should have been the tagline for Gotham. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> um, so let's talk about part one of The Happiness Patrol. The Happiness Patrol, part one. Written by Graham Curry. Directed by Chris Clove. Produced by John Nathan Turner. Script edited by Andrew Cartmel. Air date... November 2nd, 1988. The Doctor and Ace arrive at an Earth colony on the planet Terra Alpha. Ace is quickly put off by the elevator music playing from the speakers all over the colony and the tacky decor. On Terra Alpha, a group called the Happiness Patrol walk the streets, looking to arrest any citizen who seems depressed or unhappy. Upon returning to the TARDIS, the Doctor and Ace find out that it's been painted pink, by the members of the Happiness Patrol. The Doctor decides to get arrested on purpose so that he can investigate further. They are quickly caught by a patrol member named Daisy Kay. The Doctor is arrested as a spy, while Ace is sent to audition to be a member of the Happiness Patrol. While under arrest, the Doctor meets Harold V, a servant to the leader of Terra Alpha, Helen A. Now, Harold's job is to play a game machine where the only prize is watching a pre-recorded video of Helen A. telling a bad joke. His only wish is for death. Elsewhere on Terra Alpha, another Killjoy is arrested for displaying unhappiness and is executed by another citizen of Terra Alpha, the Candyman, a robot who lives underground and conducts candy-themed experiments on citizens. After Harold V is killed by the cash game he was playing, the Doctor and Ace decide to escape using a nearby go-kart. Ace is captured again while the Doctor fixes the go-kart's engine and she's taken to auditions where she meets Susan Q, a member of the Happiness Patrol who is secretly depressed. She helps Ace escape, only for her to be captured again. The Doctor meets a man named Earl Sigma, a wandering blues musician, and the two make their way to the Candyman's secret lair, the Candy Kitchen, where they're quickly spotted by the Candyman. Uh, part one opens with this poor woman meeting with a, uh, with a Deep Throat-esque character who turns out to be an undercover Happiness Patrol agent. Uh, and this guy, um, whose name is, is it si Silas P? Is that his mm -hmm. name? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Silas P, he only has one move as a uh, happiness patrol agent. He wears his happiness, his pink happiness patrol outfit under a dark trench coat. And he hangs out in areas where killjoys, which is what people who are sad are called. Uh, and he, 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 he like... 
picks them out and then goes and sits and befriends them and gets them to complain about something. And then he gets them arrested. Mm. Uh, and that woman dies. Um, yes. He has yeah. that woman killed. He has that woman killed. But it's his only one move. So like when he gets taken out, I'm just like, yeah, that's good. Because he's not actually very good at his job. He just keeps doing the same thing over and over. He's again. like uh, – he's almost like a process server or like a, a guy who hands mm-hmm. people subpoenas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is, oh, yeah. Like the – you've been served. Yeah, like that. Those like people. Seth Rogen yeah. and Pineapple Express. <laughs> you got like a trunk full of disguises. Oh, I forgot <laughs> that's what he did in that movie. <laughs> oh, man. Um. Yeah, so uh I don't know. I the idea, see that's the thing is like I love the idea of the happiness patrol. I love the idea of you know calling criminals killjoys. Yeah. Um, that in particular felt the most felt like the most effective satire is that like it would be like that's how it's like the the passive aggressiveness. Right. Mm-hmm. It it feels to me like if someone like uh like a Grant Morrison or a uh, Gerard Way. Yeah, or a Gerard Way. If there somebody was like pitched this story to them and then told them to adapt it into a Doctor Who story, it would be like ten times as good as this. This is. would make a great like comic adaptation or a comic remake. Ye- oh oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm actually surprised that Grant Morrison's never written for Doctor Who before. Um Ooh. I think he may have I think he may have written some like old 80s Doctor Who comics, maybe. Hey, if Neil Gaiman could do it. Yeah. Well, did Neil Gaiman write comics? Or are you talking no. about the show? Yeah, I think he's yeah, talking Doctor about Who. the show. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, our favorite um, episode, Nightmare in Silver. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh yeah, I I so anyway, yeah, Grant Morrison should write for Doctor Who. And somewhere. you know, and, and speaking of like Someone remaking this better. I also kept thinking how much of a Russell T. Davis story this felt like. Mm-hmm. It it just mm-hmm. this whole era of Doctor Who honestly feels very yeah, and that Russell and that way T. the Russell T. really liked to find things that he found distressing or tacky or annoying about modern culture, and then like throwing it on a canvas in Doctor Who and like kind of poking poking fun at it. We're about mm-hmm. to talk about one of those things. Um, in which he wrote a uh, you know a ninety minute uh, tirade about uh, Bluetooth uh, Bluetooth <laughs> yeah Bluetooth microphones and how much he hates them um, <laughs> and how stupid you look for having one uh, ninety minutes ninety minutes he wrote about two whole hates, parts two whole parts about how much he hates two Bluetooth whole parts so funny. <laughs> I don't think he's ever been more of an old, old grumpy old man than in that writing that two parter right there. <laughs> it's like these these dumb kids and stupid men with their dumb Bluetooth things, dumb, stupid. You're all stupid, and now you're all that's dead. Russell T. Yeah, now you're all dead. <laughs> See, that's what you get when you have a Bluetooth. Stupid. <laughs> anyway. Look forward to that in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, yeah, okay. So lots of Dutch angles, lots of noir lighting and and stuff. It felt this um, felt like the world of the smooth criminal video. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, actually, like I could see uh, the Candyman sort of like getting down. <laughs> In a Michael, Mike, <laughs> Michael Jackson Get back. video. Turn off that <laughs> music. Anybody's like dancing to it. <laughs> Michael Jackson plays Gilbert. No. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah. When people, um, when people do wrong... They, uh, they send them to the waiting area. And then eventually they get killed by... Sticking them in a tube and drowning them in fondant syrup. And it is the messiest prop I've ever seen in the show yet. Yeah. I don't – maybe it's like a British thing that I don't understand. But like fondant doesn't look like that. And no. 
it bothers me that that's yeah. what it's called. It, no, and it, it doesn't. It, it that that is that is not fond of in British because as a avid watcher of the British oh baking right show, yeah they know they know there what's is, up. They, yeah, they know what fond it is. They call the right thing the right thing. So I, I think this is entirely someone being like, fondant's sweet, right? We'll just call it fondant. Yeah, there's a lot of just throwing words around in this. Uh, yeah. It's just a – it's like a – Yeah, it's – but it's just like I, so <laughs> – it was such a weird way of – in a show that whose bread and butter is executing people, this was one of the weirder ways I've seen it happen. It's yeah. like Nickelodeon slime, but instead of like lime green, it's yeah. Red. And it being red yeah. is just inherently so much like grosser. Yeah, because like yeah, green is a very like not you know very whimsical color, but it's like when this it just looks like it looks bloodier than it is because it's like it's supposed to be candy, mm-hmm. but it's like I don't know, it was weird. Yeah, it's like poisonous candy. Yeah. Um, it's really weird because yeah, the Candy Man. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I missed it or what, but like I don't know where the candy man came from or why why he exists, oh. but he does walk around in his candy kitchen designing <laughs> sweets that kill people. Well I can I can tell like, you I can answer this question, purpose. Scott, but it would be more apropos if I answered it when we discuss part three. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um but anyway, yeah, so uh he's the candy man's like bat cave is the candy kitchen. Um God, what if, uh, what if, like, I, I just, it would have been so much better if the Candyman was like a good guy, was just like a, was like a happy, like a happiness patrol vigilante. Yeah. <laughs> like, and <laughs> like that, his bat cave was the candy kitchen. Like peppermint. Like, like, I don't know. Yeah. God, it would have been so much better. Have no fear. The Candyman is here. Yeah. Eat oh about my, my candy. And, and he's like just throwing them. <laughs> yeah, the Candyman's here. Yeah. Like if you had the happiness patrol and then the candy man also went out and like like tried to make like sad people happy without like killing them, just like <laughs> take some candy, you're welcome, goodbye. <laughs> Be happy, chin up, candy, out, peace. And Gilbert <laughs> is his Alfred. <laughs> yeah, I made the candy man. Gilbert, refill my stomach with candy. <laughs> yeah, I like that better because it's just now it the way it's kind of I don't know, but you're right though that it, it I got the impression that that the Candyman and the Happiness Patrol were in like an uneasy alliance, like a strained alliance, kind of like how Kylo Ren was kind of with the First Order, but not really. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At one point in this story, um, the, so, so Ace gets taken by the happiness patrol because she's going to like audition for them. Um, and, uh, during this process, like the doctor gets a, a go-kart and this is this great bit where, um, he's fixing the go-kart before she gets taken away by the happiness patrol for auditions. And, uh, he fixes it and then stands up on it and it was like, Hey, I got it fixed. And then, like, the Happiness Patrol comes after him, and he's like, whoop. And he, the way that he drives away in the go-kart where he's, like, half standing is, like, one of the funniest, just, like, <laughs> perfect Seventh Doctor moments ever. He's, like, a silent film He really character. is. I love in, this. in this I one in particular. Because so um, like, yeah. there's this great part where he goes, he walks up to one of the patrol girls, and he's like, I have a question about the go-kart. And she's like, what? <laughs> and he's like, if I were to ride away on that. Well, would you be mad? And she's like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Oh, but we're, we're going to." Is the thing, and it's just like it goes on for like, and I'm like, "This is really funny." <laughs> he's uh, he's he's great. Um, I really do think the Seventh Doctor era of the show is sort of like an unsung era yeah. for the for for Doctor Who because I think everyone just remembers it. I think I think this, everyone hates the Sixth Doctor era so much that it like taints everything that came after it <laughs> um but like seventh doctor era is really oh yeah uh, it's unsung honestly. one of the highlights I think mccoy is having so much fun in this episode mm-hmm. oh yeah and and much like a lot of modern doctors like you know i hate that stupid fear her episode of doctor who but 
Well, I mean, it's so much fun seeing seeing the tenth Doctor like running with the Olympic. Yeah, torch, the Doctor saves the know? Olympics. <laughs> yeah, like that's so fun and and great, and and that's like why I love the show. Is like you know sometimes even when the story sucks, like the Doctor is still like great. Yeah, in it. I mean, and this is this is an example of that. That's like me. the eleventh Doctor crest. Right, right. This story sucks, but I'm great. <laughs> um, <laughs> The 11th Doctor way. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. His, so, yeah. His, his half standing, half crouched uh, go-kart escape is uh, one of my favorite things that he does in this story. It's um, just foreshadowing his performance in The Hobbit mm-hmm. when he's got, like, the rabbit train. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And also when, uh, when Ace is driving the go-kart at first before it, like, dies and he has to fix it. He's like riding on the back and he's he's he strikes this pose like he's royalty like on the back of like a uh I don't know like uh like one of those um um what am I thinking of like a those carriage? like like yeah like a like, carriage like those things in like Spartacus a chariot you know? oh like chariot a chariot yeah, yeah like like yeah he like he's royalty on the back of a chariot and it's just like <laughs> ace just like sitting in the go kart, going vroom vroom. <laughs> I know they're going like two miles an hour. It's <laughs> it's it's adorable. Um, I uh, I just I love these two. They're wacky. Um, yeah. I mean that's that's uh, that. I think that's pretty much it in uh, part one. Um, the Happiness Patrol, part two, written by Graham Curry, directed by Chris Clough. Produced by John Nathan Turner. Script edited by Andrew Cartmel. Air date, November 9th, 1988. Ace is led by the Happiness Patrol to an area called the Waiting Zone. Meanwhile, the Doctor and Earl Sigma are being menaced by the Candy Man down in his candy lab. Using his trademark smarts, however, the Doctor is able to get the Candy Man stuck to the floor by stepping on some lemonade that he had spilt. The Doctor and Earl explore a large pipe through Terra Alpha and encounter a group of pipe-dwelling creatures called the Wences. The Wences help the Doctor distract the Happiness Patrol long enough for Ace to escape execution. While Helen A. learns of the rebellion rising from the pipes, she sends her wolf muppet Fifi down below to take care of the Troublemakers. Meanwhile, Fifi chases Ace and the Wences down in the pipes until Ace knocks the creature out with a can of nitro. Just as Susan Q is about to be executed by her former Happiness Patrol allies, the Doctor convinces the Candyman to stop the execution in exchange for being unstuck from the floor. Now free, the Candyman tries once again to attack the Doctor, only to get stuck on the floor again. Ace and Susan Q are brought to Helen A, who orders them to publicly audition for the Happiness Patrol, which can be a deadly affair. Part two, I, you know, we got introduced to Fifi in part one. <laughs> yeah, but Fifi is not it, it, definitely it not a, named until part two. Right. Um, I love the scary Muppet dog. It's so it, weird. It is so. It weird. looks like uh, it looks like a like a Happy Meal version of the Wolf from Rampage. <laughs> <laughs> spot on <laughs> um yeah i loved it i mean it was so, great uh yeah i really found myself is- attached and becoming attached to the to the fifi puppet the character yeah yeah um so uh yeah so we get introduced to a couple of things uh, so so fifi made um her first appearance in part one but then is uh used for plot device purposes in part two also introduced in part one and uh and but but used in part two are the uh the uh well, the, the teenage mutant sewer rats um yeah i don't understand the weird sand people that live in the sewers i don't like what what yeah sewer rats sewer rats I I I am entirely is- I am entirely convinced that in 1988 somebody at Doctor Who thought, well, those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles things are a big deal. 
we should do something like that, but in Doctor Who. And then we got these rats. You know, things. they are. Because there's literally, are literally there's, rats. There's literally shots in part one where they're like lifting up a manhole and peeking out of the manhole, like Ninja Turtle right. style. And they've yeah. got the um, color coded waistbands instead of headbands. Yeah. And yeah, they, they're, they're wearing kind of like, <laughs> um, like robes, it looks like. Yeah. Like monk robes. Yeah. Right. They're kind of monk robes. And like, yeah, I don't think they're literally rats, but they do look very They look wolfine to me. kind of. They look – but yeah. kind of rat-like, kind of like some kind of like uh, – I don't know. They have like like pointed, pointed yeah. I would say, their faces are. Yeah. And uh, they're all played by children. Okay. That was a – Oh, that's even ter- – like that's more that terrifying. Was a point of, yeah, that was a point me. of confusion for me while watching it. It's like am I watching a performance of a of – a, of a, of a of a dwarf actor or a or a child, you know, like, yeah, yeah, child, yeah, just like the Jawas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Warwick Davis was he was he wasn't he uh, both at the time, right? Or was he? Yeah, he was both at yeah. the time. But the other but the other Ewoks were just were usually just dwarves. They just wanted Wicket to be especially small and cute, mm-hmm. and that he was. So, yep. Um. Yeah, so I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I, I, it's very, it's weird how complex this is. Without, it's like they just keep introducing elements because we're 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 introduced. Like, at the, no I think reason. in part two to like the yeah. agents that are undercover, like digging up dirt on the Happiness Patrol. Like like they're being audited. Oh Let's yeah, see. right. I don't know. There's a lot going on here. Like, because there's the sigmas. Because everyone in the Happiness Patrol, it's like their surname letters are their rankings. So like A, like someone named A is like the leader, but like you know Susan Q, mm-hmm. Daisy K, mm-hmm. Priscilla P. Mm-hmm. But then there's like the sigmas. I don't know. I don't. Right. I, that didn't. I, that, that never became really clear to me. Well, from what I understand, um, and this was something that was going to be explained, I guess, more implicitly in the story, but the scene was cut out of the final version. Um, Susie Q at one point, Susan Q, whatever. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously Susie Q, but uh, Susan Q, it, she uh, reveals to Ace that she was. Um, just a few weeks previously was actually uh, Susan L, but had been demoted to Susan Q. Mm. That's weird. So, like, the letters signify, like, how high they are in the alphabet signifies how good they are at their job or something. I don't know. So, mm. Yeah. Oh, uh, upon further uh, investigation into the TARDIS wiki, uh, the pipe people that we were discussing earlier are uh, called Wences. Oh, yeah. I knew what they were <laughs> called. I just didn't care. I, like, I do, like, I don't care about most of the names of the aliens, the one-time-off well, aliens. I think it's more well, yeah. fun to call them by whatever we decide we're going to call them by. Um, because well, I just don't want to – you know. Not, well, now we can you – know, we'll call them pipe people. <laughs> pipe people. <laughs> Uh, that feels racist to me the same way that sand people feels racist. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because it's like a, a noun in front of people. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. They're native, native Tatooineers. And, uh, I don't know. Tatooineers also sounds like an insult. (laughs) (laughs) Does it? Isn't that? You Tatooineers. (laughs) Tatooineers. Anyway. Um, would you call people from Bespin cloud people? Is anybody <laughs> from Bespin? That's true. It's like LA. <laughs> yeah. Uh anyway. So Sure. Um Yeah, so these uh these the 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 yeah, the mutant ninja rats. Um I don't uh I don't know. They send Fifi in to go sniff them out and then um Ace blows blows up Fifi, but then Fifi's fine. Yeah, I was really happy when Ace got to blow up something. Yeah, she was happy about it. It's yeah, like that's good. her that's her signature move blowing blowing mm-hmm. stuff up. That's her thing. The 
Uh, the cliffhanger to this episode has to be one of the weirdest cliffhangers in the history of the show. Yeah. Um, Is that the one with the poster? Yeah. Yes. Okay. The rest in peace poster. Well, that's weird. Yeah. Well, yeah, like because it's like they there's two posters and one is of the woman who died in part one, mm-hmm. and it's like R.I.P. and it's like oh no, Ace is next, and like she's the next poster cool. on the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they we forgot yeah. about the fact that they the Happiness Patrol paints the tart, and this is this is what I'm talking about with the reason why that like this this does this story doesn't make any sense because the happiness patrol find the tardis and they pull up out in front of it and they take out their pink paint and they repaint the tart the blue tardis pink because blue is a sad color and pink is a happy color but mm-hmm. everything else surrounding the tardis is black and gray and dark blue so why aren't mm-hmm. they painting everything pink like i just don't the 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 literal ground they're standing on is black what are, like what are they doing? Doesn't yeah, make any like sense. It, it would have been yeah, like again, like in a more like uh, if everything looked like a Hello Kitty mall, and then it would have been funny to see the TARDIS getting like painted pink over the blue. You know, like can't right. have this. But yeah, you're right. Everything looks so like dingy and Dickensian almost that it 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 feels like it's the only pink thing in the frame in the shot. Yeah, the it Tardis. looks like um uh, the you know the Big Brother novel 1984. Yeah. 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 It looks like everything looks like 1984. And then all of the people are wearing like all pink and being like, smile. And it's also <laughs> annoying because the Happiness Patrol, they don't smile. They're never happy. Yeah. So, like, they're why? wearing like, they're, uh. they're wearing kind of like Brazil, Terry Gilliam, like makeup. Right. Bearish kind of like makeup over the, yeah. But then, and they say things like, I feel good. Like, I'm glad you feel good. But like, they aren't acting it. They're just, yeah. Yeah. Which would have been, could have been really funny. Like, if right. they, and creepy. And creepy, yeah. for sure. And, and, like, I really do think that this is, like, it doesn't feel like this is a final draft script. I think they could have made this more interesting uh, and tightened up a lot of this and then added story to make it more interesting. And then also, I think the director that they chose was a poor choice. Mm. Because I don't, I don't think Chris Klo knew what he was doing. Chris Clow. I think, I think that... If because there's a very specific um, aesthetic when you s- call something like a dystopia, mm-hmm. so I think the aesthetic fits with that and not what's actually happening in the story. Right, like he, it's almost like they told him he was doing a dystopia story, but didn't tell him the plot, and so he designed everything based on you're doing a dystopia story, right? And then got the oh, script. It, be bleak, and was like, it should be oppressive, right? And then got the script and was like, oh, that's not. What this is. <laughs> oh, well. We don't have the budget to change it. Um, but they don't say anything like that in the behind the scenes. So I don't think that's what happened. I think he just, maybe he just didn't read the script. <laughs> he just shows up. He's like, all right, let's film. And yeah. then he's just like, um. We don't have a set yet. Why are we painting it pink? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't have a set yet. Well, yeah, just throw up some walls and some fake trees. Let's do this. <laughs> what do we need? What do we need? A bench? Get a bench and a wall for him to hide behind. Let's start shooting. Time is money, chop chop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really it looks like a lot of this story, like outside of the candy kitchen and um and the office uh that the the main villain is in. Um everything seems to me like it's uh like a black box theater. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's really strange. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It is the last letter. Cause the villain's name is Helen a. Yeah. Cause she's mm-hmm. on top. Right. And then, but like, then there's like the guy that's playing the harmonica. That's trying to teach the world, the blues, Earl, uh, Sigma. Earl Sigma. Right. Who, they're outside of the, the, the alphabet. Right. Huh. I loved Earl Sigma. Yeah. So it is like an alphabetical, power thing okay Mm -hmm. well um yeah so anyway i don't like the way that this story looks at all uh it doesn't make any sense it 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 distracts from the story i think um anyway uh so um oh yeah oh there was this one bit though that's uh, that's actually pretty funny so uh 
apparently Clo wanted the whole story to be that film noir feel, and he kept mm. using the third man as uh, a reference point for what he wanted the story to look like. The Orson Who Welles, hasn't? the Orson Welles story. Um, mm-hmm. oh. And uh, he was like, "Yeah, I want it to feel like this, like you know, lots of Dutch angles and like." you know, crazy noir stuff and it's going to be awesome. And, uh, John Ethan Turner was like, I don't like that idea. So in, what I want you guys to do is I want you to erect the set so that he can't get those angles. Oh my God. Yeah. So he literally made them erect the set so that Clo was incapable of getting the angles that he wanted for the whole story so that he couldn't make it look like that. That is the most passive aggressive, like petty thing I've ever heard yeah. in my life. Well, and I love it. <laughs> John Ethan Turner at this point. I mean, yeah, yeah, he doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was pretty petty just throughout his tenure, to be totally honest. Um, but anyway, uh, call him John Nathan Petty. John Nathan Petty. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, um, yeah, so that's. Uh, that's that's I guess that's part two. Rest in peace. I will maybe. <laughs> I will say that the line that made me laugh the hardest was in this, and it's the Candyman because of oh, course, and he that, says, that's... "I'm a Candyman of my word," and I just yes. died. <laughs> it's that was a game changer for me. That was the moment that I, <laughs> I'm a Candyman of my word, Doctor. Like, <laughs> well, like that you... is that that is shooting your shot as a writer. Like, yeah. I can't. His name is the Candyman. <laughs> uh, I, and while we're on the subject, I think it's part three where he threatens to show Ace the back of his candy hand. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, they can't. They should have just focused on the Candy Man. All of this other stuff they could have just gotten rid of. Like, what if? What if instead of an oppressive government, and they just get rid of all of that heavy-handed, uh, heavy-handed uh, Helen yeah, A stuff. Yeah, and it's just the psychopath robot. Yeah, yeah that's just, just like, like everybody a... needs to be happy or I'm going to kill you with candy. Mm-hmm. It's like a chaotic, evil Willy Wonka robot. Yeah. Like, that's oh amazing. My God, that'd be so much better. <laughs> he lives in the pipes. He throws candy at us. We have to smile or he'll show us the back of his candy hand. <laughs> Because that's literally the only thing I remembered from watching it the first time was the Candyman. Yeah. Oh, man, that would have been so much better. Yeah, this heavy-handed government stuff is the thing that needs to go. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um, Because then, if you're just using him, then uh, the rest of the sets all make sense and everything at that point. Because it's it's, – they're only – it's all – like their happiness is – is is like that's not really what this world is. It's just that they're all afraid of this crazy Wario looking Candyman guy. <laughs> um anyway. Like the Joker meets Bowser. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Uh, I don't think he ever leaves his pipe base, his 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 candy pack factory. No, he doesn't. He keeps getting trapped with lemonade. Yeah, no, he, yeah, that's ground. that's what happens in that, in part two. He just he just gets stuck to the ground of his candy kitchen with lemonade, and his buddy <laughs> his buddy uh, Gilbert just like comes by and is just like, Haha, "You stupid jerk!" And he's like, "Help me, Gilbert!" And he's like, "No!" And then he just leaves, <laughs> and then he gets released by the doctor, and then the doctor does it again. And it's like, bye. And Gilbert comes like, you stupid idiot. It happened again. God, you're dumb. Such a weird, it's such a weird story. It's such a waste of a weird concept. Yeah. I agree. Um, The Happiness Patrol, part three. Written by Graham Curry. Directed by Chris Clough. Produced by John Nathan Turner. Script edited by Andrew Cartmel. Air date... November 16th, 1988. Ace and Susan Q are sent to the forum for their public auditions. The doctor is given a list of everyone that Helen A has banished from Terra Alpha over the last six months. When the Happiness Patrol arrive at the forum with Ace and Susan Q, the doctor is there waiting for them. He begins laughing and capering about right in the faces of the Happiness Patrol, making their sadness-powered weapons unable to hurt him. A parade of banished citizens join the Doctor, 
their joy and revelry overwhelming the happiness patrol and allowing the Doctor, Ace, and the others to escape. Fifi is once again sent to chase everyone through the pipes, but the Doctor tells Earl to play his harmonica, causing the creature to howl. Fifi's howling causes crystallized syrup to rain down on itself, killing the wolf muppet once and for all. The Doctor and Ace head back down to the candy kitchen, where they chase the candy man into the pipes, where the Wences direct the flow of the syrup to drown the candy man to death. As the social order she created implodes all around her, Helen A. prepares to leave Terra Alpha, but before she can, she's accosted by the Doctor. He accuses Helen A. of having no emotion or feelings, an accusation that's quickly debunked when they come upon the body of Fifi. Helen A. weeps over the body of her beloved pet as the Doctor stands over her, victorious. Ace repaints the TARDIS blue, and the pair leave Terra Alpha, having saved it? So, part three... Uh, this is the story. Th- this is the part of the story where the doctor um, does uh, stand-up comedy, in which he just laughs into a microphone to stop himself from oh, getting man. arrested <laughs> by the happiness. Is that is that when he is that when he does a little bit of sing when he sings as time goes by? Yeah, that was great. Yeah. And then and then uh, Troy Sigma or whatever his name like like plays back. As time goes by with the harmonica, mm-hmm. I thought that was such like a fun little moment. Yeah, it's where we get the snipers too. Is in this story. Yeah, the weird like two snipers that are like, oh, I know what to do. You don't know what to do, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> and the doctor convinces them to just hand him their guns, mm-hmm. their rifles, and he's real. He's real. He's real mad about it too. Oh yeah, he has a real like. Like, do it! Pull the trigger, man! I'm ready to go right now! <laughs> and they're like, geez, okay. And a little bit of foreshadowing. <laughs> uh, because little bit of know, he will indeed uh, die, die to go. Oh my god. <laughs> that was all I could think about during that scene. I was like, dude, stop. I want to think about that every time a gun is pointed at the Seventh Doctor. <laughs> you know, this is how you go out, um, by the by. Fiddle dee dee, guns cannot hurt me. I'm the doctor. I wear <laughs> question marks on my sweater. No, man. That's the only thing that could make the candy man better is if he said things like fiddle dee dee. <laughs> fiddle dee. I'll show you the back of my candy hand. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so then uh, Fifi gets drowned. So does the candy man. That can the can, okay yeah so, the Candyman's death is horrifying. They actually cut out the bit of him being overwhelmed by the by the syrup. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. I can just like imagine him like screaming. Yeah, and then just Wah. they cut it out because they thought it looked bad, and they're just like, let's just not use that. So yeah, so the Candyman's like husk of a body like comes crashing down in front of Gilbert and someone else, and then the guy turns to Gilbert and like. Didn't you create Candyman? He goes, well, yes, I did. I created him out of, uh, he was a robot. But was he a man? No, he was a robot and he was broken. Oh, could you remake Candyman? No, not even if I tried it. <laughs> he, you know, the personality was, came from him. All I did was build Candyman's body. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> like, yeah. these Gil, we're just getting like minutes of exposition about a character whose dead body just hit the ground. <laughs> After Candyman dies, we like learn everything there is to know about Candyman in like a page. Yeah, just spoken to us. Oh, it's crazy. It was the weirdest bit of like television writing I've ever seen. And it was also <laughs> because we don't go into the tube. What we get, we're treated to just a bunch of shots of pipes and sound effects. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And it reminded me of uh, when the uh, when the kid drowns in the in the chocolate pipes in uh, Charlie oh, and the no. Chocolate Factory. <laughs> yeah, that's what it reminds me of. I, I I kept waiting for like the like the 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 little uh, the pipe people to come out Olympus. and just start singing. Yeah, the pipe people. <laughs> yeah, the pipe people come out and start <laughs> singing. Oompa, oompa. Or like or like. Or like drumming on with his head. <laughs> Go back to Ewoks. <laughs> right. Oh man. And then uh yeah, the doctor stages like a like a love in, basically, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Pretty he much. Just laughs aggressively until they run away. Yeah. You can't kill me. I'm truly happy. <laughs> and then they uh, they overthrow the government. Uh, Fifi drowns herself. Um, like her barks are what makes the su- the syrup crash down on her. Or her howling. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real Disney death because it's like no one's fault. Yeah. But a dog does drown. No, no, it is it is their fault because the doctor the doctor tells Earl Sigma to play certain notes on his harmonica so that Fifi will recreate those notes in the barks, and then that's what kills her. So it's the doctor So the doctor murders a yeah, dog. Yeah, the doctor manipulates Earl to murder a dog. Cool. <laughs> or manipulates Earl to manipulate a dog to murder itself. <laughs> he makes he makes Earl complicit. Yeah. Thanks, doctor. Yeah. So better than a gun. Don't use guns. Don't use guns. <laughs> Instead, manipulate people into killing other people. Into killing themselves. <laughs> That's the doctor way. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's the doctor way. <laughs> and uh and yeah, but like the there's so yeah, there's like that classic bit of like everything's fine. The uh, Earl Earl Sigma says that he's going to stay behind so he can teach the planet the the ways of the blues, which I thought is like the best mission statement ever. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that they make a sequel to the Happiness Patrol uh, someday called the Sadness Patrol, and mm-hmm. Earl Sigma's teaching of the blues backfired, and now it's just opposite world where no one can be happy, only sad. <laughs> what would be the candy man in that story? The sad the sandy man. I don't know. The sandy man. Sandy man. The sandy man. <laughs> Just makes everything sandy. Oh, this is <laughs> terrible. Yes, it is. He just looks like he just looks like Oogie Boogie from like the Nightmare Before Christmas. Like that old sand man. I'll hit you with the back of my sandy hand. Oh god. Here's some sand in your eye, you stupid asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh man this story anyway it's a weird one it's very uh, silly. it ends it ends with like the helen a being like no i'll find a place where you know because she sees emotion she, she sees like strength is like not being sad covering it up mm-hmm. like piling it with happiness that's what she sees like strength at and the doctor's like isn't there anything that can make you sad, and, the dog, and she's like, "No." And then she sees her dead dog. I know it's so uncomfortable. And then she's like, "Yeah." And then the doctor, like, kind of like, like, hmm, I knew, I knew something could make you sad, and like that's the end. I guess that's like the lesson she learned. <laughs> hmm. Well, and it's a, uh, it's indeed the image. Of that's the thumbnail image on the uh, the TARDIS wiki up for this episode. Yeah, her wailing over her her dead wolf creature. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was a good wolf creature. She was. Oh, Fifi! <laughs> you know the Happiness Patrol when they were all together, uh, they reminded me a lot of. Um, like the minor character, like the like the the chorus in uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show, like the sort of like extra characters. Oh sure, mm-hmm. like yeah, the people. I forget that are, what they're called yeah. in the show, but um, like the people that yeah, they, they, the people that open the show. If you go see it live, they're the ones that sing the opening song or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. ones that are doing like the time warp and yeah. wearing like the tuxedo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, That's yeah. what they remind me of is like those characters in Rocky Horror. Just like the way that they move, sort of like all in unison and stuff, mm-hmm. like unison, but like cha- chaotic unison, not like perfect unison, like soldiers. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's just what it reminds me of. I like their My Little Pony wigs, like the pink and the purple. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. pink and purple, happy colors. I guess so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Anyway. That's the Happiness Patrol. Uh, not my favorite. Next time we do Seventh Doctor, we've got the Silver Nemesis to look forward to. That one 
sounds fine. Yeah. Cybermen. Sure, Cybermen. It's fine. <laughs> um, not my favorite Cybermen story. Not my least favorite Cybermen story. Right. You know, it's, it's uh, right there down the middle. Um, <laughs> so that's good. Uh, when we come back next week, we'll be talking about the Eighth Doctor and the uh, story Invaders from Mars, which comes from Mark Gatiss. Oh, hey, yeah, boy. So we've got love him. Yeah, so we've got that. Um, that's like our last big sort of question mark Eighth Doctor episode for a while. Like everything after that, I'm like, oh, I've heard all of these. Um, Invaders of Mars, I have not heard before. Uh, so that should be hey. Like we've been saying all round, it just has to be better than Minuet right. now. <laughs> True. True. Uh, and then on the other side of that, we'll have uh, The Long Game, The Cybermen Two-Parter, and then Amy's Choice. And then we'll be on hiatus until uh, Series 11? I always forget what season we're about to go into. It's 11, right? 8, 9, 10. Yeah. Yeah, 11. Yeah. 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 So, Season 11. Um. Crazy. Which, um, all right. Well, everybody, I'll talk to you next week with Invaders from Mars. Bye. Yeah.